masking here in San Francisco. Let me extend a very warm welcome to everyone participating this morning or this afternoon from the Netherlands and this morning here in California. So glad to have you with us and thank you for, for being here. And I would like to extend, extend a very special welcome to two people from the beautiful city of Culver City in LA, that is Mayor Alex Fish and former Mayor uh, Thomas Small. Thank you for being here and uh, honoring us with your, with, your presence, with your presence. You're very strong advocates of the circular economy and uh, we're very happy to be organizing this event together with you. Um, and I would also like to mention that uh, Mr. Small used to be the mayor of uh, Culver City and he currently uh, heads up, he's the CEO of Culver City Forward, which is a very uh, instrumental organization as you will be joining in, uh, in the area and in Culver City for its development. So as you might know, the Netherlands uh, aims to be fully circular by 2050, and that is a goal we uh, like to, let's say, uh, advocate for internationally. And I think that resonates with, uh, with, with Culver City very well and with, with LA in, in general. Um, and it's really fantastic to see how Culver City is integrating uh, the circular economy and, and circular thinking in, in its urban development. Uh, and uh, as I understand, you're especially focusing on uh, community engagement and uh, also uh, ho housing development in that regard. So, so we applaud you for that. Mr. Small um, visited the Netherlands. He saw with his own eyes our own best practices and experience in this regard. So we're happy that you were able to, to come to our country in 2019, all before this terrible pandemic hit. Um, and even the other way around, you hosted our Vice Minister for the Environment, Lord Lapere, who visited uh, together with the Dutch delegation, Culver City and the LA region in that same year. So thank you for, for doing that. And I think this, uh, these visits uh, back and forth and the fact that we're now together hosting this uh, this, this event, this digital event, really kicks off our cooperation and I'm very excited for our Dutch participants to learn more about what you've been doing and how possibly they can contribute to your success. Um, this is, um, I hope, the start of a long-term cooperation between uh, Culver City, LA and the Netherlands. So let's, uh, let's make sure that happens. Um, I would also like to now uh, invite uh, either Thomas and or uh, Alex to say a few words on behalf of the city. Uh, after that, we will be uh, looking at a little video presentation of, about Polar City so our Dutch friends can learn more about what you've been doing and how they could be of assistance. But first, let's go to Thomas and Alex. Thank you so much, Vincent. How This is so exciting and so satisfying to see this group together. And, and I'd just like to, to uh, defer to the mayor to begin to, to really welcome everyone to our, to our wonderful city. So Alex, please go ahead. I am just uh, very flattered to be involved in this at all. Um, and on behalf of Culver City, I think we're sort of taking baby steps. Um, these are our first steps. Um, it's very nice of you to say that we're embracing the circular economy, but that's more of a condemnation of the rest of our country <laughs> than, than a compliment for Culver City. But I think, um, you know, this is an existential imperative. I say it every time because it is, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here to learn. And thanks for having me. Well, uh, Vincent, if I could just say a couple of words about Culver City. The, the, uh, just in a nutshell, the extraordinary thing that that uh, we have here in Culver City that that and under Alex's leadership at this time is that we're we're a small city of of about forty thousand that is right in the heart of the west side of Los Angeles, really one of the most vibrant areas in, in the world, really. And and the being a small city, we're more nimble and able to move a little faster than the city of LA. And hopefully we can take advantage of the tremendous power of the city of Los Angeles in partnering with them and learning from them. Uh, but the, the, what we refer to lately as kind of the singularity, an event uh, like the event that we're all experiencing that, that doesn't come very often, is that we have Apple, Amazon, uh, HBO, uh, Sony, uh, and TikTok, among other, among other large companies that have their media headquarters here in Culver City. So we're expecting about uh, up to or more than 10,000 new uh, employees working with those companies as they expand 
uh, you know, into their their headquarters that they're finishing building here in Culver City over the next couple of years. So that really creates a, a tremendous pressure and a tremendous opportunity. And that's what that's what my organization, Culver City Forward, is about, is about building those relationships and building uh, those relationships with folks like yourselves to help us meet these challenges and and really take advantage of them. Uh, rather than let them roll over us. So thank you all so much for being with us here today. Thank you so much, Mayor Fish and former Mayor Small for, for introducing uh, Culver City. And uh, well, unfortunately, we're unable to join you physically this time, but I'm quite sure that uh, we'll be, we're building on the relationship that already exists. And I'm sure that our participants from the Netherlands are glad to, to come and visit maybe sometime after summer once both uh, the United States and the Netherlands have been vaccinated. Fingers crossed for, for that. Um, well, obviously we want to make sure that our participants from the Netherlands learn more about the city. So we asked a Dutchman living in uh, LA, Hidde de Vries is his name. He runs a creative agency by the name of Creative Dutchman to make a video about Culver City. So I suggest we uh, look at that video first. After that, Moderation of the Culver City event will be taken over by Alice, whom uh, our participants already know. She's uh, with uh, Space and Matter, one of the uh, participating uh, organizations from the Netherlands, and she will be uh, guiding you through this, uh, this event. So, but first let's look at the, the video about Culver City. Welcome to Culver City, one of the 88 cities in LA County. The city spans just over five square miles and has a little over 39,000 inhabitants. Culver City is diverse and is praised for its vibrant downtown as the center of art and recreation, the cultural city of Southern California. Like many cities, Culver City is grappling with several urban challenges, such as conflicting demands for space, traffic congestions, aging infrastructure, and maintaining a livable and healthy urban environment. Culver City has the ambition to address those challenges and enhance the quality of life for the local residents, business ecosystem, and the community at large. That is best done through collaboration. We all could potentially play a role. Let's zoom in on a few past and future initiatives in and around Culver City, illustrating the ambition to move away from gridlocks and decay. One of the ways to arrive in Culver City is by Metro Expo Line from downtown LA. The Culver City stop is a convenient 30 minutes away from the 7th Street Metro Station in DTLA. The Expo Metro Line coming in had and still has a hugely positive impact on Culver City. Next to being a transfer point, the station area is a destination in itself. Through the creation of proximity, non-essential travel negatively impacting the environment is discouraged. Across the street from the Culver City Metro Station is an interesting development called Ivy Station. The Ivy Station development contains residences, a hotel, offices, retail, and a public square. This project is anticipated to be an energetic center of life for residents and visitors alike. It greets Metro passengers with a bike rental hub, green space, and passages that allow cut-through pedestrian traffic towards National, Washington, and Venice boulevards. Ivy Station is a so-called transit-oriented development project. In Culver City, areas of interest are in each other's vicinity. If you have to run a few extra errands, you will find repurposed outdoor retail complex, The Platform. It is conveniently located across the street from Ivy Station and only a 10-minute stroll from downtown Culver City. It used to be an old railway station and after that, a car dealer. Elements of that past have been retrofitted and integrated into the design. It is a historical place reimagined. At the edge of the platform plot, a corner has been singled out to provide an eye for the hurricane amongst the swells and storms of culture, commerce, transit, and transience, as the designer puts it. A simple park for the unsorted exercises of being together. The Culver City Metro Station is a transportation node that allows for a shift from one mode of transportation to another. So let's walk back to the station and get a bike at the Metro Bike Hub. If we're hitting the road from the station towards the Sid Cronenthal Park in the east, we will reach Bologna Creek, a channelized tributary of the LA River. The creek was once a meandering stream that met the Pacific Ocean in a broad expanse of tidal lagoons, salt marshes, and wetlands. Today, the mostly concrete-lined channel drains a largely urbanized watershed of approximately 130 square miles. 
federal, state, regional, and local organizations are working together to restore the ecological health of the creek, increase habitat, improve and expand open space, and optimize water resources in Bologna Creek watershed. Along the creek is a pleasant bike path that leads all the way to the beaches of Playa del Rey and Venice. In the near future, this bike path will be extended to the mid-city cycling system as well. On the way towards the beach, we pass Milton Street Park. This park is a beautiful example of the efforts to restore the creek's ecological health and its connection with the surroundings. We're talking about a 1.2-acre linear urban park alongside the Bologna Creek Bike Trail. The plan incorporates numerous green design elements, including the use of recycled materials, native planting, flow-through planters, and water treatment elements alongside the 1,000-foot-long, 45-foot-wide stretch of land. A variety of special elements such as birdwatching platforms, bike trail enhancements, seating, and outdoor picnic areas enhance the visitor experience along the trail. Before going back to Culver City, let's make a little detour to the Santa Monica City Hall. The recently built City Hall East models Santa Monica's commitment to addressing the realities of climate change and is 100% self-sustaining. Hello, my name is Amber Rochane with the City of Santa Monica, and I'm here to introduce you to City Hall East, or what was formerly called the City Services Building. This building is not only net zero energy, but it net zero water, as well as net zero waste. What that means is that we are living within the means of what Mother Nature is giving us on site only. We also have urban agriculture to feed our 240 staff members in this 50,000 square foot building. So from our photovoltaics on our roof and carport to provide all of the energy for the building and our water treatment skid in the basement that treats our rainwater and well water to a potable standard and deliver to the building and our composting toilets that use only three tablespoons of water for flushing instead of 1.6 gallons. We believe that this building is truly part of a circular economy and a regenerative living future. Before we end this tour with a nice cup of coffee and a bite, we have to draw your attention to an interesting future project, an empty plot owned by the city of Culver City. I'm Thomas Alhero Small, the former mayor of Culver City, and I'm here today to talk about an affordable housing project. This site is really extraordinary because it's right in the heart of the heart of Culver City. You know, Culver City, we refer to Culver City as the heart of Screenland, and this, this particular site is really the very center of it. It's an ideal site in many ways for, for uh, an affordable housing for artists project because it's right at the heart of the city. You can see the Kirk Douglas Theater is on this side. On the other side, we have uh, a, really a row of excellent restaurants uh, that make it that, that, that the theater patrons often often go to. So the the having housing would create more diver, a more diverse block um, and bring housing downtown, which we we very much want at this time. This project is still in its formative stages, but there is motivation and urgency for the project to move forward. Okay, time for our final stop. Let's get a locally and organically grown meal from the Truck Stop, a food hub with the ambition to make our planet a happier and healthier place for generations to come. A fact you should know about is that all the packaging materials and utensils used are recyclable or compostable. The compostable packaging is delivered back to the farms and subsequently used to grow more food. Cheers to that. Um, thank you very much all for the introduction so far. And I'm super humbled and excited to be leading this intercontinental workshop with you all today. Um, I'm here, I'm, I'm Alice from Space and Matter and I'm here because I've been leading um, the series of workshops that we've done so far with uh, the Circular Urban Development Cluster um, with whom we have all of the participants, I think, on the call today. Um, and the idea behind this cluster is bringing together 14 innovative and expert uh, companies from the Netherlands who have expertise in different domains of uh, the circular city. So we have from water to materials, to um, digital, to food, to community. Um, what we've been doing together is really exploring how these domains um, can find synergies across them and how we can create something which its sum is greater than um, the value of all its parts. And I think Jan mentioned earlier that uh, what we really need to do as a cluster is also do our research on LA. 
So what we plan today is to do some very interactive research with you guys where we really test and explore and experiment um, with how the kind of innovations uh, that we've developed so far in the Netherlands might support um, uh, your challenges in Culver City. So we're really excited to kind of uh, test some of those ideas and we have a lot of them. Um, and I think in, in giving a bit of a kind of uh, first look into what we have to offer, I just wanted to share a video which uh, we've prepared of two of the kind of neighborhood ecosystems that we've developed so far in Amsterdam. And I think some of you have visited them in real life when that was still possible. They are called the Koval and Scone Skip. Um, but for those who haven't had the chance to come over, I'm just going to share my screen and then this gives uh, a bit of background on what we have done so far. Hi, Alice. Sorry for jumping in, but there's no sound. Or somehow, can that be turned on? Oh. No sound? No sound. It's actually only music anyway, so I mean, All the right. content is just there in the screen. Yeah, we'll we'll okay? see ourselves, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry that the sound didn't work there, but I hope that that gives a kind of flavor um, of what we've been working on in the Netherlands. And what we tried to do in the workshop today is kind of distill down these projects into their constituent parts. So we're able to share with you some of the kind of ingredients and test whether they would also be uh, useful and relevant uh, in Culver City. So I think I just give um, over the floor to Ruben to introduce uh, what the cluster has been doing so far. Yeah, yeah. I, th thanks, Alice, for your introduction. I'm Ruben. I, I know most of you, and, and I'm so excited to do this today. I, I'm coordinating the cluster on the Dutch side. And uh, so, so we've met many times and discussed, you know, collaboration many times. And it feels like today we're really taking a next step. And um, um, it's good to say that, that all the co Dutch companies that join this session, uh, and I can really confirm that they are really the pioneers in Holland when it comes into developing circular neighborhoods and solutions that accelerate the circular economy in the Netherlands. So the video that you've just seen, it, it's, it's of course proven technology because that's already out there for, for a few years. Thomas, you, you visited yourselves. And um, what we would like to do is to take a next step in creating a next level on circular neighborhoods. You know, what we want to do today is also to see to, to partner up with you guys and to make it concrete. Because we need international partners to work with, to learn from. Uh, it was a great video on 
Culver City, and well, we visited uh, two times ourselves. So, so we've also seen the projects of City Hall in Santa Monica. So we also realized there's a lot of knowledge and, and well, innovations over there. And so, so our idea is to, to put it together. Um, but to do so, so we said, okay, uh, we, we've held some workshops with the Dutch group, um, see what we could do if we combine, you know, from, from our Dutch partners, because they didn't all work together on Schoonschip or the Keuvel. We got on some other partners, you know, on 3D printing of, of let's say, plastic waste and make new facades out of it, or blue-green roofing that cool the, cool, cool the uh, city, etc. Well, you get to see all of that. Um, so together we, we've laid out an exercise to, to see what, what would happen if, and we did that with, with Thomas and the mayor and, and their team, see if we can, you know, transfer maybe three areas of Culver City and let's make it an exercise. And of course it's still open, but what would really happen? But I'm sure that it will spark some, some ideas and, and hopefully we can make it partly happen or maybe start a pilot project and it can be in Culver City or maybe in the Netherlands. Um, so I'm really glad that, that Space and Matter has been taking the technical lead in this because they are the real project developer with, with the knowledge how to combine all of these technologies, but also to work with communities to create affordable housing because we've discussed that that's also a very important topic. It's the same in the Netherlands. Um, so I won't take up any more of your time and I'd like to give the floor back to Alice and, and just looking forward to, to taking the next step on this. Yeah, so we're going to try a bit of an experiment with this uh, very big group of people and try to work together on uh, a software called Miro. And I think uh, you all have the link. I placed it into the chat here. So if you haven't done already, please just uh, click on this link and see if that opens up for you. You may need to create an account if you don't have one already. So I'll just give you a moment to do that. And meanwhile, in order to kind of better introduce the companies that we have uh, from the Dutch side today, um, I'm going to share a series of uh, visuals we've made, which is really to start a conversation about how some of these ideas, concepts, innovations might um, translate over to California. So we've prepared a kind of day in the life where we um, allowed ourselves to imagine how that might work. Um, so if I share this one, um, this also gives an overview of all of the companies um, and their domains. So here you see the full list and I'll go rather into the images. So in the domain of water, um, what you see here is Hydroloop, Metropolda and Dessa, all part of one water reuse system uh, at the scale of the building and the neighborhood. On materials, we have Nadasta, Ledax and TNO. On food, we have GrowX. On community, we have crowd building and space and matter. And on energy, we have spectral and metabolic. For public space, we have super use, actual and high tech road. And I think in the workshop, we'll go much more into detail in terms of what all of these companies have to offer. Um, and we can also hear from them. So I'm going to now ask if everyone can switch over to Miro, but keep the Zoom on one side of your screen. Or if you're a lucky person who has two screens, that's even better. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's open up Miro alongside the Zoom and then I will see you all there. So I can see many people there already, that's perfect. And someone's drawn some very big arrows to the location we need to start. I think um, I will give a short introduction to the workshop, but does anyone want to shout out if this is not working for them? Because what we also have set up is a separate breakout room where you can get some technical assistance with um, handling Miro. So just shout out if that's an issue. So if I don't hear anyone on that uh, point, then I will kind of 
give a bit of a further introduction of what we want to do to together today. I see it looks like a lot of folks aren't actually at the board yet. That's true, we can wait a bit longer to really get going, but I can meanwhile describe um, a bit further the idea. Oh, it's moving around a bit. Let me just lock that, apologies. Okay, so the idea today is to explore how Culver City might become LA's first circular district in the future. So really allowing ourselves to um, imagine how that be might be. So I think before we jump into that, I'd love to ask uh, Thomas to do a bit of an introduction to the Culver City experts that we have on the call today. So we have kind of both sides covered. Thank, thank you, Alice. I, I'm gonna go quickly through these introductions in the interest of time. So uh, you've already met uh, Mayor Fish, delighted to have, have him here offering, our, offering leadership in Culver City. Um, Marty Borco, thank you so much, Marty, for joining us with the Urban Land Institute, a, is a hugely important organization for us to be working with. We've done a lot of work with them uh, here in Culver City. And Marty, just for your, for your information, before he became the, the leader of the Urban Land Institute here in Los Angeles, was kind of the senior urban planner for, for many years with, with Gensler's office uh, here, here in, in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm just going down my list. Uh, I, on my, the next person I see on my list is Craig Hodgetts, uh, a, another extremely well-known and admired architect uh, based here in Culver City for many years. Uh, design the the uh, the Hollywood Bowl uh, renovation, uh, amongst many other hugely important projects, largely cultural, but but many other types also across the country. Um, next, I see I see George Montgomery, um, who is the owner of Procolo and, and uh, one of one of our premier uh, co-working spaces where uh, any of your companies could have offices when they need to come to Culver City. Um, and George has been a tremendous advocate for, for housing as both a, uh, a resident and a, a uh, housing and mobility as both a resident and a business owner. Uh, next, I see Hannah Cohen, who works with me at, at Culver City Forward that, that many of you will be hearing, hearing from often in the future. Uh, going further down, I see Katie Seek. Uh, fantastic to have Katie with us here. She has one of the most extraordinary minds that I have encountered uh, about systems. Originally, she was trained as an anthropologist um, and has since worked in a broad range of things. And, and I really got to know her in her uh, work at RAND over at the RAND Corporation over the last five years. Delighted to have Katie with us here. Patricia, you know, uh, is an important uh, uh, unofficial, also unofficial ambassador of the Netherlands here in Culver City. Then I see Patty Ree, uh, the, one of the principals with EYRC Architects here in Culver City, who have designed many of our, our, our major uh, landmarks here in Culver City, including the restoration of the Culver, uh, of, of, the, of the Kirk Douglas Theater, the uh, you know, major building at the Ivy Station, and, and our, uh, our Culver Steps right at the center of our city also. Going further down, I see Travis Morgan, uh, who is one of our advisors here with Culver City Forward. Travis is, is, is really uh, a business person, uh, has worked with large corporations, and, and uh, the, uh, has a, 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 an MBA from Northwestern. Um, but Travis has also become very, a very active advocate, particularly for mobility. Uh, mobility and, and excellence in urban planning here in Culver City. And then finally, I see Vince Korth, another hugely important person to have here. Vince is a principal with Red Car Properties, uh, a very progressive developer um, that owns, owns major properties here in Culver City uh, and, and in Santa Monica, uh, largely along our creek. Um, really, really a force for, uh, a, a huge force for this kind of work uh, in, in, uh, in the, the, from the real estate side. So we have a diverse group that I brought from, from, uh, from Culver City and really happy to have everyone, everyone here. Thank you, Alice. Is that, is that a, a, enough of an introduction? Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks very much. And, and please okay. uh, chime in if I missed anybody. The, the, I, but I, I, think, I think I went down the list pretty carefully. Yeah, fantastic group. 
Okay, great. So now I'm in the mirror and I'm uh, trying to bring you all towards me. I think one of the most useful features of Miro is in the top uh, right hand corner of your screen. You should be able to see uh, show collaborators cursors and then it's showing a bunch of uh, circles with different colors and these represent the different people in the space. And if you can click on me, that's Alice, I think in yellow, um, then what that does is bring you to where I am presenting. And that would be really helpful because then I can sort of lead you through. Yeah, I think I see people starting to come. And what I can also do is actually share my screen if it's not working for some people. But I see people uh, on their way. So I'm just yeah. going to start with a few housekeeping rules, I think, uh, in terms of great if you can all keep your camera on as much as possible, but it doesn't seem like that's a, um, that's a problem for this group. So that's perfect. Um, and please close any other programs or website tabs. Uh, please mute yourself if you're not speaking, but of course, please speak up as much as possible. We want it to be really interactive and ask questions if something's not clear or not working. As mentioned, we'll have this separate breakout room so we can um, uh, we can help you technically if there's an issue. Excuse me, Alice, where, where, is, yeah. where is your name for us to click on it? Yeah, it should be right at the top in the right hand corner. There's a bar. Uh, show collaborators curses and you should be able to find my name there. Um, Alice, would you just... be able to share your screen and show the people? Yeah, is that better? Sure. Oh, sorry. Thomas, if you just search for Alice, it'll come up. Okay. So if you're viewing through Zoom now, I'm, I am sharing my screen. Perfect, um, thank you. Actually, the location is up here where you see everyone. So that's great. I can see, yes, 30 different people and I'm the A there in yellow. So maybe I just continue to share my screen for anyone for whom it's not working, but of course for the interactivity of Miro, um, it will be best if you're all in that space. So I'll give a bit of an introduction to what Miro is, because uh, I'm sure it is new for some people. Um, it is this kind of infinite digital canvas. So what's really nice is that even though we're in different continents, we can workshop in one space together. Um, and we can have all of the different functions and more of a kind of regular whiteboard space. So a couple of the main tools that we'll use today, it might look a bit complicated, but I promise it's quite intuitive once you get going. Um, one of the most important is actually this Zoom, which is in the middle of your uh, keypad if you're using a regular mouse. And if you're using a Mac uh, mouse, then you have to press command and then um, move in and out. So that zoom allows you to kind of focus in an area like this, but then also zoom out to get the board overview and move along the different activities. Um, edit is also a, a really important one. So just double click on, on the left hand button on your mouse to edit things like post-it. So we're gonna mostly use post-its um, to put our ideas uh, forward on the board. Uh, if you want to undo something that you've done, you can control Z or command Z, depending if you're on Apple or PC. And if you want to copy, for instance, you want to copy a post-it or um, a card, we've made a number of sustainability intervention cards, then you can option drag or alt drag for a PC. So those are the main functions and as I mentioned, this follow the group is extremely uh, useful. So if you kind of click on following me, then you'll keep in the right place. Um, and in general to have those hide collaborators cursors always switch to on. So you see where everyone is and you can kind of stay with the group. So I think those are the main features. Does anyone have any questions at this moment? Sorry, I see. Yeah, I see on your screen something is moving much more than on the on my screen that I 
head on. Is it the people with their curses yeah. that's, that you don't have on yours? Yeah, if you just go up to the top, there's a button on the right hand side, which you can click okay. on to show yeah. collaborators curses and then you get everyone's names. Okay, so to test a little oh. bit if uh, this is working for everyone, I wanted to do a short icebreaker also to kind of uh, wake everyone up if it's the morning or if it's the end of day. So this is a uh, split for the Dutch participants and the Californian participants. Um, and we're gonna use a, a timer. So we'll just have a couple of minutes for this. I'd love you to just think of the first thing that comes to mind when you think of California, if you're from the Dutch side, and the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the Netherlands, if you're from the Californian side. So let's see what we all think of each other. I'm gonna give uh, two minutes for this. So just shoot from the hip. Uh, how do you make the post-it again? Well, you can just pull one of the existing post-its that are there um, using your uh, mouse or on the left-hand side of your Miro space, there's an option um, at, called Sticky yes. Note, I which see. also yeah. allows you to create your own. Yeah, you see incredible quality of life. That's very kind. <laughs> Fire, surfing, surf and sea, beautiful sunsets. Yes, you don't get much of that here. And you can also resize these uh, post-its for some people who are making uh, super-sized post-its. You can pull the corners up and down to uh, make them bigger or smaller. Oh, yeah. okay. And for those who are kind of writing on top of post-its, if you double click on the post-it with the left button on your mouse, then that's gonna allow you to type into the post-it and that just makes it a bit easier. And you just want one post-it per person? Yeah, just the first thing that you think of. Okay, thank you. Great bike infrastructure and human-scaled streetscape combined with massive civil engineering. Wow, nice. Water and design innovation. Lots happening on the Californian side. Traffic, hip hop, nice. Surf. Okay, time's up. And I'm quite convinced that people are doing well with the post-its, so that's great. Okay, I think I'm gonna move already onto the next one where you get to kind of continue a bit with this method. Um, so if you can follow me slightly to the right where you see this kind of blue sky through the window. Do I have everyone over there? Okay. So what we want to do here, the idea is to start to explore our kind of collective vision for the future of Culver City. So of course, from the Dutch side, we really want to learn from you guys and know what you um, see as the kind of main challenges uh, in Culver City today and what you want to work towards in the future. So what you see here is um, uh, the Three Horizons model developed by Bill Sharp. And this is a very nice framework for thinking in a structured way about the future. Um, so what we can do, uh, you can see three, three kind of lines going from left to right. And these represent three horizons. So the idea is that the green line, this is the emerging future. So something that's kind of starting today, it's nascent. Uh, we can think about sustainability or circularity for that matter something that we want to work towards in the future that should become actually the kind of dominant paradigm in the future. So this is the positive horizon, the regenerative and distributive economy that we want to move towards. The red horizon, this represents the kind of business as usual. So this is all of the challenges that we see today, things like CO2 emissions, things like 
poor health statistics, poor air quality, um, all of the evidence that our kind of current system is not working for the planet and for people. Uh, and what we want over time, of course, is for that horizon to kind of drop off and give way to the more positive horizon. So what I'd like you to do is kind of think really from, from a personal perspective, what do you want for the future of Culver City? Um, we'll start with the red post-its on the top left-hand side. So this should be evidence that the current system is failing. So what are some of the main challenges that you see today? I think some have been um, already outlined by the LA Green New Deal document, which is a really nice one. Um, but from, from your personal perspectives, what do you see as the key challenges today? So I'm gonna set another timer for five minutes and just take a bit of time to think about that one. Lack of local food security, food waste. Yeah, food is a big theme. And if anyone wants to shout out at this point, you know, something that they think of that really triggers them, something that they see someone else has written down, feel free to also um, just shout out. Disconnect from nature. Lack of affordable housing, yeah. Reliance on cars. Insanely expensive for the average Joe, I like that. We also <laughs> suffer from that in Amsterdam. <laughs> Fear of falling behind or losing what you have. That's a very nice one, this kind of feeling of precarity, maybe being precarious, yeah. Just in the meantime, if anyone has problems with Miro, you can maybe text me directly, Aga, on in the chat. I saw uh, Craig having some problems. I already texted you if you need help. Thanks, Aga. Not enough workforce housing. Yeah, this is interesting. Having a sustainable household takes so much effort. <laughs> Long commutes, yeah, of course. Bad roads. Too little green space. Mm -hmm. Will my kids even have an earth? This is a very dystopian one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Next, we go on to the positive section. <laughs> Yeah, 
Is there anyone who wants to um, tell us about the kind of key challenge that they see today for Tolga City? I can talk about, um, so I wrote about the um, not enough work, not enough task force or workforce housing. Mm -hmm. We have an office of uh, 45 people in Culver City. And so I don't think there's a single person who actually lives in Culver City, which is really a shame. Um, and it's because they can't afford to buy housing there um, and not even to pay for rent there. So I think that forces people to live further away and to have to commute into the um, city, which is also, you know, leads to more carbon emissions. Um, so it's just kind of a circular problem, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Housing seems to be a big theme. I can see lots on that. So let's talk about that. If I could just add on to that, it's the same for teachers, for firefighters, for police, for a lot of our civil servants who historically have lived in neighborhoods. Um, they are they are often blocked out as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you both for mentioning that. Let's take that into the next exercise. So if we then kind of allow ourselves to free our minds a bit of those sorts of uh, challenges or imagine how they could be transformed in the future, if we move on to this green section um, next to it, which is future aspirations. Can you guys already think of how those things might be different, might be mediated? What new types of housing or development would you like to see to give, um, give a place to some of those people who currently can't be there? Uh, how would things look different in, a, in an aspirational future? We'll give another five minutes for that one. I understand. And do you see the same role for the, the Dutch uh, participants as for the um, participants from Cove City? Yeah, I think so. I think I can already see a lot of Dutch participants yeah. taking part. I think it's it's nice that we kind of do this together to uh, really yeah. think about those future aspirations, because I think many things are shared between yeah. the Netherlands and Culver City and um, we can also kind of help each other to, to dream a bit and to uh, unlock what could be possible in the future. So yeah, please, to all of the Dutch participants, um, uh, feel free to kind of um, put your ideas on the post-its as well. Cars equals optional, that's nice. <laughs> Would you guys say that you really have to have a car to get around Culver City today? Yeah, I see some nods. <laughs> Walkable. Yeah, healthy air quality. Is air quality quite a big uh, challenge at the moment also? Yeah. Decentralized and municipally owned power generation. Nice. Co-designed communal spaces, lots of green. New models for affordable housing, better climate balance in agriculture and livestock farms. It's interesting. Would uh, someone be willing to explain a bit about that one? Who put better climate balance in agriculture and livestock farms? A bit putting on the spot there. Hi. 
Higher buildings, yes. This is interesting, something we can discuss. Density. Terraces along Bologna Creek, nice. No cars in downtown. Remove barriers to owner occupied redevelopment. It's interesting. Is anyone able to say what are the barriers to owner occupied redevelopment today? Cost and uh, approval of plans. Yeah, say more. What, what's the challenge in terms of cost and approval? It's a difficult process. As yeah, as, as the housing prices go up here, the cost to consider a redevelopment that would add housing um, it becomes beyond what um, a lot of people are able to do, and the necessity to have a lot of specialized knowledge to actually even complete the project because uh, the building process is complex, um, particularly the approval process. So uh, moving to like a pre-approved standard plans for quicker approvals and uh, I, ideally some sort of trust or, or a public bank that could help with some of the financing with the overall goal of getting more housing um, into a lot of the single family areas. Yeah, yeah, we came is, across in our research an example of uh, a number of pre-approved housing plans that are available. I can imagine this would speed things up. But I think, yeah, that question of densification is also very interesting to take into the, the next part where we actually start to work session on the sites. So great. Yeah, Alice, the, the, uh, the other development that I visited there with Space and Matter with, with uh, Ruben and TJ that's very near De Coivel, that's 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 that neighborhood where the individual families uh, designed and developed their own homes. That yeah. that's that's something that that just that is uh, a very interesting model for us here uh, in Culver City, and something that that uh, particularly George's advocacy and and Gerhard Meyer, who I think who unfortunately couldn't join us today, um, uh, you know, uh, have have those those approaches. Uh, could be very valuable for us here. And, and, it, and it'd be yeah. very interesting to show that to, to uh, Marty Borco as well. What, yeah, was that's the name of that what was the name of that other uh, neighborhood? It's the Bautzlotterham it? area, Thomas. It's, yes. uh, it's actually where I live. And currently I am here. <laughs> we have this self-built neighborhood, as we call it. So everyone just uh, could rent a plot uh, on land lease from the municipality and build his own house there. I think this is a great transition already to the last uh, section, which is indeed this inspirational practice. Yeah. So if I can pull you down to the lighter green, this is where we want to identify some of these kind of examples, like Baxlotterham could be one, uh, both local, both Dutch and also Californian, where there are sort of seeds of an alternative future already going on or sort of promising um, examples, local initiatives or projects that you've visited. So I'll just give a few minutes for this, and then this is going to really help to uh, create some of the ingredients for the ne next task and think how that might translate to our Culver City sites. Another aspect of, of the barriers that, that uh, George is talking about is the, is the cost, because there's so much cost in, in developing buildings or homes here here in the United States, there's so much cost involved with marketing, with finance, uh, and cost that doesn't really go into the building. Um, 
uh, but is is but is part of the the marketing system for real estate. Um, and and those those uh, you know finding a way ways for homeowners to to ma- you know manage their own uh, lodging destiny uh, would have to address that as well. Mm-hmm. And how do you see um, the possibility of kind of circumventing that type of cost is is self build and kind of uh, connecting directly to communities even before uh, developments get going in order that that marketing isn't needed? Is that kind of an interesting uh, approach? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. That was certainly one of one of the fascinating aspects of of uh, TJ's neighborhood and how yeah. that was how that was uh, conceived and and designed and and developed. Yeah, can take away a lot of the risk, I think, of development yeah. when you yeah. already have the residents there on board. I, I put a little image below our our working board so you can see uh, the neighborhood Thomas is referring to. Nice. Is your house on there, TJ? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and TJ, maybe you'd like to elaborate how these houses are still affordable because that, that's a big thing here. Well, the, the thing is that if, if you uh, develop your own house, then you, uh, you, know, you hire a contractor to build it then you actually pay for what the house actually costs. Whereas if I would buy a house uh, off the market and uh, a newly built house by a commercial project developer, I also pay for the margin. So uh, a commercial developer has uh, also can build very cheaply, but he will always sell for market price because that's, that's the idea of being a commercial party. You have to make a profit. Um, so when I'm building my own house, there is no incentive for me to make profit on building my own house. So it's far cheaper than whatever I would get on the market. What was there before? It used to be an in, uh, industrial site. Uh, it was, uh, I think, a concrete uh, factory's uh, um, uh, uh, stock here. So it was fully full of uh, concrete sheets. And this whole area, the, the, the Bagsvete Ham area, uh, uh, used to be and still is actually a light industrial area um, and a uh, production area. And um, what we are trying to do here in Amsterdam is to, to, to mix it. So to get a, a, a mixed use area in which uh, 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 housing and uh, production space go hand in hand and also benefit from each other in a way. So that means if uh, there's excess heat then f- from, from industry, then uh, homes can take the excess heat and heat their house with it. So these kind of interactions, that, that is what we're, uh, what we're looking for. See, this, is, this, is, this discussion is absolutely fascinating for Culver City because we, we do have, you know, our, our famous creative office neighborhood, the Hayden Tract, is a is a formerly a light industrial area, and there there still is some light industrial activity there, um, but it doesn't have any housing in it. And the idea of combining those uses uh, could be, and having having them benefit each other, uh, could be very uh, interesting for Culver City's general plan update that we're engaged in right now. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Um, Those kind of ingredients and those ideas, that mixing of uses and many of these examples that I see here, I think if you guys can hold these in your head and then we take it into the site sketches that we're going to work on next. So I think you have mapped out an amazing uh, kind of wealth of ingredients here. And what we'd like to do is actually already today translate them or start to translate them uh, onto sites. So if I could pull you away from the, uh, from the blue sky area and onto the next uh, board. So here what we've done is start to, start to break down some of the, the innovations that we worked with in um, uh, Decovo and Skin Skip, but also other projects uh, from the other companies that we have on the call um, and start to turn them into kind of ingredients in the form of cards that we can actually work with as a kind of prompt to discuss today. So I think there's programmatic elements, this idea of 
mixed use of uh, more dense and possibly sort of bow group and housing. This is key as well to kind of bring over. Um, but we like to introduce you a bit to um, some of these sustainability interventions and then see in the next stage on any given site, what's a good mix of these things. So what program should go with um, uh, what approach to sustainability. So I'd like to uh, introduce Aga, who is uh, Aga Biedelak, who is one of the um, sustainability architects in our office at Space and Matter, um, to just describe uh, a bit the cards that we see here and the kind of interventions that we want to share. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here. So as we saw, like uh, so many great examples in the previous session and the previous spaces, we tried to, in this uh, space, uh, to cherry pick some interesting circular interventions that we could, that could possibly become part of the uh, urban plan. So I will guide you through these cards uh, that we will later on use in the breakout session the rooms and uh, to start with the category of food and biodiversity we have few interventions here such as local food production oh, nice. that could be provided by uh, 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 hydroponic installations that are very efficient and can be located in uh, small neighborhoods to uh, support them with uh, fresh organic helps herbs and small greens. We have uh, green corridors that are super important to uh, create uh, resilient vegetation within the city landscape. We have also community gardens that were mentioned before that could become interesting part of the food supply system. Also uh, habitats for local animals that would support biodiversity and enhance it. And to go to the next category below, we have different solutions for community-led initiatives, such as a platform for collective li living concepts from crowd building that can ensure that uh, different types of living uh, can projects such as self-built street that we mentioned a moment ago can be initiated by the group that meets uh, online and then creates the, the building group uh, in real life. Uh, then we have a participatory urban design process, which is a very interesting solution to go through urban design with the neighbors and residents to ensure the uh, long lasting relationship of the residents with the land they will uh, live on and make sure that these solutions uh, implemented are the ones that the, the residents would like to, to see there. Then we have a community land trust and uh, nonprofit corporation that can that holds land on behalf of a place-based community and that can uh, support a parallel uh, housing market and ensure long last Thing, uh, communities uh, in the land. And then we have the various shared living concepts uh, such as co-housing or different sort of uh, housing cooperatives. So bottom-up initiated uh, housing uh, concepts. And the next part we have is public spaces. And in here we see uh, different very interesting concepts on how to introduce circu circular economy with circular products such as reused materials for public spaces with a great example of reusing uh, wind turbines for uh, um, playground here from the Netherlands and then super interesting project of 3D printing from uh, recycled plastic and uh, durable public uh, urban furniture made of it. Mobility hub that was already mentioned also in the Culversity uh, video, and I think everyone is familiar with. And of course, uh, uh, promoting a bike network, like commuting by bikes to uh, really lower the, the car traffic and uh, get better 
air quality. Then we move to the next uh, uh, row with energy, with diverse solutions for renewable energy from energy storage to smart grid connecting and ensuring that the energy producers can, consumers can become prosumers and produce more, uh, if they produce more energy than they consume. Mm, we have also shared electric vehicles and e-bikes uh, to not only have them electric and emission free, but also shared to have a smaller amount uh, of the uh, of traffic in, in, in general. And then uh, next row materials with, of course, all of them uh, circular uh, solutions for materials, starting from material passports that carry information about uh, uh, each material that it's uh, held within the building and gives a possibility of reuse of the material after disassembly or eventually demolition of the building. Also residual value calculator that gives insights into residual financial value of building products, uh, also with uh, material passport information. And then circular products with an example from Ledex. Uh, then big scale solution measuring material flows to uh, know what's going on in terms of materials, water and energy within the neighborhoods. And the last one, marketplace for cir circular building products, which can help us to map where, the, where there is a possibility of a product to be used, a uh, secondhand product for our construction. And few last solutions for water, starting with harvesting rainwater and uh, also then uh, next step, uh, um, gray and black water possibilities to reuse gray water with installations such as uh, Hydra Loop and uh, to uh, use uh, waste as resource from black water thanks to using biorefinery and turning uh, it into energy, nutrients, and of course, water. So with all these solutions, I think we'll go to the next step and try to see what could, can be the spatial implications of using these solutions in the chosen plots or spaces yeah. of Culver City. Exactly, thank you very much, Aga. So we wanted to uh, kind of give you all a chance also to meet each other in smaller breakout rooms and actually to focus on how these kind of interventions and the program ideas that you um, mapped out before would actually translate onto real sites. So we had a kind of pre-meeting uh, two weeks ago and we selected these three kind of prototype sites in Culver City. The first is a um, suburban kind of residential block. The second is uh, Hayden Tract, the kind of industrial transformation area. And the third is uh, downtown Culver City, the, the part that was shown in the video um, where there's an idea to uh, redevelop the site there. So what we've done and for the um, uh, for time is to pre-group you guys all into three groups, which are a mix of Dutch and uh, Californian participants. Um, and then we're going to take you into these breakout rooms and me, Aga and Chiad are each going to lead one breakout room uh, where we have a discussion on how we could actually go about redeveloping uh, one of these areas. So I think because we are a bit behind uh, on our time so far, we are just going to shorten these breakout rooms to 15 minutes. So there's uh, three steps in each breakout room, so five, five, five. Um, so if Milena is, is on the call, then is it possible to already go into the breakout rooms? Perfect. So see you guys in 15 minutes.
Hé hey Walter, wil jij, uh, wil jij nog ergens bij? Ik hoor je niet. Het staat op mute. Yes. Uh, heb je nog ergens, uh, moet je ergens nog uh, mensen het laatste? Of? Hey Walter! Ja, hallo. Waar ben je niet in Hawaii? Hoe zit dat? Hoe zit dat? Ja, als je niet dag ik dacht, waar ben je nou? In de, in de, in de vliegtuig. Je zit toch in je Yosemite zo te zien? Ja, ik heb je Yosemite, ja. ja. Het is helemaal confusing. Hawaii, Yosemite. Het is helemaal te sneeuw. Het is helemaal te sneeuw in Yosemite nu. Dus, uh... Mag ik daar ook nog naar een groep? Ik wil, maar ik kan er wel uit, toch? Uit die groep, als ik dat zou willen. Ja, ik wil toch even ja. kijken. Ja. Ja. Ga jij dan anders ja. naar één nog land? Als in, daar zit ik nu niet in. Ba- waar moet ik naartoe? Ga je dan naar één? Ja, doe maar. Doe maar maar naar één. Oké, okay, daar ga je. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> en Walter? Ja, zeg, zeg maar. Wij hadden jou bij drie gezet, ook omdat vooral omdat Emily daarin zat. Maar Emily is volgens ons weer vertrokken. Oké, okay, is het eerder vertrokken? Of te, te vroeg? Uh, ze of? was volgens mij alleen bij de Good Morning gedeelte eigenlijk. Dus uiteindelijk niet bij de workshop. Oké. Okay. Ja, ze was gisteren de hele tijd ook bezig. Ze was gisteren bij de opening natuurlijk en bij de matchmaking. Was ze hier bij helemaal... Uh, was, was ze hier expliciet voor uitgenodigd, voor deze? Ja. Of, ja. ja, toch wel. Oké. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maar goed, ja, ze zal misschien andere dingen gehad hebben. Ik heb ook had gezegd dat ze het fijn vonden dat zij erbij was. Maar ik twijfel een beetje of haar nu echt moeten gaan aanvingen om terug te komen. Ik denk niet... Nee. We, we, we hebben al behoorlijk veel van haar tijd gehad, natuurlijk. Dus en de, de, en de one-on-one is heel goed gegaan gisteren toch? We hebben toch positieve feedback. Ik heb ook ze verbonden met de mensen. Dus, uh, ja. Met andere mensen nog, met andere bedrijven. Dus ik denk dat het allemaal goed te gaan. Dus ja, je kunt kun ook niet zo heel veel tijd van ze, van ze vragen. Dus uh, oké, okay, maar dan... Ja, ik ben weer bezig met een nieuwe reisverzoek. Dus het gaat ook lekker door. Um, oké, okay, ja, zeg maar. Ze mij nog echt... Succes, Walter. Nee hoor. <laughs> Je had ook een presentatie voorbereid, toch? Ja. <laughs> ja. Nee, maar uh, zeg maar, als je mij um, okay. hoeft niet ergens, ergens voor kan gebruiken, gebruiken, doe het zeker. Ik ja. zie dat uh, de, de review is, uh, is, uh, op een later moment is gezet. Ja, kan jij dat? Ja. Ja, in, in principe niet, maar uh, ik, heb, ik heb die andere meeting verzet. Dus uh, even kijken, die weet verzet. Dus dat zou moeten kunnen. Ik, ik, ik ben er gewoon om één uur. Ja. Oké. Okay. Ja, kijk maar, want ja, precies, ze komt niet nu. Dus ja, het is allemaal een beetje lastig. Schrijven. Ik, volgens mij ook tentatief. Ja, ik, oh. en ik, ik, ik heb zo die fok. Dus uh, Freedom Online. Eens even kijken. Dus uh, nee, maar zeg maar, als je mij nog... Uh, dus, uh, jij had me gedacht van Emily. Ik ga even checken met haar. Uh, of er een reden was natuurlijk. Maar voor me waar nu niet meer te vragen. Ik zal gewoon na het event... Mm-hmm. Zal ik even pinnen en zeggen wat zij ervan vond. En uh, goed, ik denk dat het allemaal wel duidelijk was. Ze hebben behoorlijk veel van haar tijd gehad. Ik zal ook trouwens uh, Evan bedanken. Ja, graag. Zullen we na de, na de missie doen? Wat denk je dat we het beste doen? Ja. Of nu al, vandaag? Ergens eind deze week is fijn, denk ik. Ja, gewoon, en als de missie af is, dan kunnen we zeggen van de missie is succesvol afgesloten. Ja. En, uh, en dan doe, doe ik er gewoon namens uh, Dirk dan. En dan go- zet ik jou er ook in. Oké, okay, zoiets? Lijkt me perfect. Oké. Okay. Um, een reisverzoek van Gilead. Die zal wel voor... Uh, trouwens, die zal wel voor uh, NRVJ zijn. Maar goed, goed, goed. Ja. Laat me weten, vrienden. Als je, als je mij nog wil uh, gebruiken ergens. Ja, is goed. Ja. Maar je bent uh, volgens mij free to go. Ja. Oké, okay, oké. Okay. Okay, goed. Nou, Sterk je daar en dan spreken we om één uur en dan hoor ik wel wat ik... Uh, morgen ben ik niet op kantoor. En om één uur hoor ik er wel van jullie uh, wat, wat uh, mijn rol kan zijn of is uh, uh, morgen dan. Had je net afgemeld bij Moerad voor vandaag en morgen? En dan morgen dacht ik wel te komen, ja. ja. Oké, okay, dan ga ik weer gaan melden. Dat doe ik wel hoor. Nee, ik dacht, nee, ik, dacht ik zei dat ik morgen wel, uh, wel, wel, uh, wel zou komen. Dus, uh, uh, behalve als je denkt dat het niet... Uh, Nee, maar ik kom wel. Ik, ik wil morgen komen. Ik, dat was mijn bedoeling. Dus, uh, ik, ik, ik pik wel eventjes. Dat hoef jij niet te doen. Ik heb het al gedaan. Oh, oké. Okay. Even kijken. Ja, morgen, kijk, morgen kom ik gewoon. Inderdaad, dat was de, 
de planning. En ook voor de, de algemene recap dan. Oké. Okay. Oké. Okay. Okay. Zien we jullie morgen dan weer. En tot zo om één uur. Dag. Dag.
Okay, time was very short there. I don't know if everyone else also <laughs> felt really like short. that. That was too short, Alice. That was too short. I know we had to we had to shorten things for the uh, for the program, but nonetheless, I see a lot going on on each of these boards. So that's great. And could I ask maybe one person or two people from each board to just kind of uh, play back in five minutes um, or less the the kind of overview or what you came up with. So if we start with the top, the residential suburb, what did you guys come up with? So anyone willing to talk? I think Travis was really active. Maybe you would like to sum up what we found out. Oh, those who know me in this group know that's not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one of the one of the key challenges I think that people identified in our suburban areas is that they're uh, they already they're individually owned and those homeowners have a great um, uh, attachment to the way that the community looks right now. Um, you know, and and that's not necessarily a negative thing. Um, you know that that they they purchased for a reason um, and that they have a significant investment in that. So uh, one of the key opportunities that we saw in a lot of our communities, which comes, I think, as no surprise, is trying to orient some of those communities more toward the creek, um, you know, and, and providing additional um, uh, opportunities of mobility and, um, and amenities uh, pointing toward the creek and, and even across the creek, um, that that could, that could really have some, some great potential uh, and show people the opportunity of, um, changes for good rather than seeing change strictly as a negative. Okay, great. That's really interesting. Thank you. And are there any of these particularly uh, from the sustainability interventions that you guys had a, a kind of very positive conversation about? I can see that three of them have gotten very big. I'm not sure if that's a vote for them. Um, any feedback on that? I think that idea of the gray water recycling could work really well in this neighborhood um, because it's, it's, it's a relatively sort of less disruptive intervention. We also talked about guerrilla gardening, sort of taking over um, the space, some of the, the public spaces and turning those into, um, into gardens. I also think if change is not disruptive or not costly to the homeowners, you're probably much more likely to get buy-in than, uh, than making them pay for something that they didn't necessarily ask for. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. just to piggyback on Kate's comment about guerrilla gardening, specifically in the space between the road and the sidewalk, right? You know, just the narrow uh, little areas. Um, of being able to actually garden and, and get food from those spaces, I, I thought was um, really interesting and, and I think would be attractive to homeowners. Yeah, I can imagine that sort of selling any interventions here back to the homeowners will be key in order to kind of make anything happen. So that's great that you're already thinking along that perspective. Um, okay, thank you guys. Let's. And go on to the second group. This is the industrial transformation of Hayden Tract. Is there anyone who would be willing to kind of give a summary of what you guys discussed in your group? I can, I can quickly introduce it. I uh, would also like to hear uh, some of the participants uh, uh, to say what, uh, they, what they think. But uh, the, maybe for, for everyone that doesn't know the Hayden Tract, it is a not very industrial area, but it's a creative uh, office space uh, area. It is transformed into that. But it's, uh, it's quite low density. You see a lot of uh, like a single or, or maybe two floor uh, buildings, but with a very high uh, architectural uh, uh, quality, uh, but also with a lot of parking uh, 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 spaces on, on ground level. So uh, there is a lot of opportunity to increase the density a little bit, um, or maybe a lot, but we are dealing with some, uh, some uh, citywide uh, height limits of 56 feet. So, um, and then there's a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, intensify the, the green here because it's a lot of uh, 
concrete and hard uh, hard uh, space. Uh, and we also talked about the connection to the to the creek. Um, I, well, I'm very curious, Vince. I'm, I'm not sure if you're still uh, active in the call, but if, if you could, because uh, you you uh, have a, a direct relationship with this, app, so maybe you can can say a bit what you uh, took out of this very short workshop. I'm not sure if Vince is hearing me. Maybe someone else of, uh, in our in our group could say a little bit. Sure, I can I can talk to that. I mean, it's certainly it's, it's very interesting to to have Vince on the call because he, he actually owns and controls some of this uh, a significant amount of the property here. But they're there by by mixing. I mean, what we're sort of taking a new look at this neighborhood, you know, potentially by mixing the uses and and increasing the density. Uh, I think I think that the community could make this area even even have a even be more attractive to the many important tenants that there are there, um, and and yet also be able to to provide um, you know uh, amenities or or improvements that make it more efficient in terms of getting in and out of the offices, um, and also in terms of having housing and other amenities uh, you know mixed in or close by. Uh, to to make it so that people don't have to travel so much. Um, the 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 interiors of the buildings are, are, are often quite beautiful, as as uh, TJ commented, and that's what it, that's a big part of what attracts the these important tenants, such as Apple and other other high tech uh, companies. And and Thomas, I think one of the things that uh, needs to be talked about is that the surrounding area of Los Angeles has just built that huge cumulus development. Exactly. And there's a, there's a there's a kind of epicenter of very very dense development surrounding the Jefferson and La Cienega uh, metro station, which also you know is tangent to many of Culver City's uh, really um, kind of uh, almost a wasteland um, that is immediately adjacent to that. So that um, in terms of allocating density. Um, it may be wise to look at that whole area. Absolutely. I yeah, there are there are just off this map the the uh, the cumulus tower. I believe has twelve hundred new house new homes there in in the cumulus, which is would be in the top right hand corner of our map. And then there are also two other office towers in Los Angeles that that are are. are one is one is mostly under construction, quite an extraordinary one, also near the up top right hand corner. Um, and then another one a little further down along the creek uh, that will also be a gorgeous building. But those are those are probably about 30 stories or so. Oh, uh, uh, Thomas and, and, and everyone, I, I, I looked at if you hate and tract and cumulus and uh, all the industrial area on the other side of the Bayuna Creek. If you collide that all to one, that is exactly the size of the, let's say, the uh, Bauchloter Ham uh, example, uh, the same amount, 300 acres, I think, of the Bauchloter Ham. Um, and yes, this is not an industrial area, but it, it used to be an industrial, so it has this, this, this low ri rise. But then if you think of seeing it as a whole, what Craig is saying, what a capacity and a potential you have to make this a, a center, this whole, and then I don't think only Hayden track, but the combination. So it mm. will probably develop in spots, not in, in, in one area is a, it, uh, how long does it take to develop Bauchloter Hum? Maybe that's also good to mention how, how, uh, how the timeline works in that case, kind of things. Yeah. I, 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 lo I love this point and this comparison. I'm so sorry to cut it off, but just for time, we have to, I think, go on to the third. But let's continue that thought because I think finding these comparisons and finding out exactly how we can learn from each other is the perfect way to go. So if I could invite someone from from my group, from the last, uh, the last board, to give a summary of what we discussed. Is there someone from the Californian side who'd be willing to do that? I think this is a site that everyone knows very well and feels quite strongly about already. Hmm. Paddy? 
<laughs> yeah, Patty. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we talked about, so this is the former Jazz Bakery site right next to the Culver, or Kirk Douglas Theater in the rectangle. And it's a very pedestrian, um, friendly, and um, well, well walked zone with lots of amenities right around there. And so we talked about just the challenges of a developer coming there and um, coming up against the height limit, the 56 foot height limit and the density and how it might not be quite as appealing um, given the smallness of the site. But if there were some way that that could be relaxed with the city. So we talked about that a little bit um, so that you could have more density in such a hot zone like this. Um, and then we also talked about the Chase Bank site to the north, which is the, this um, kind of not well utilized building, older building with a large parking lot and, and maybe having some kind of high level discussion with them, with Chase, about how they maybe in conjunction with this new site could really, you know, talk about the circular potential for, for the, the, those two. Um, and that just given the high visibility of this location, it might be a showcase for the ambitions that we might have in terms of um, these ideas, whether it's like recyclable material or um, different systems that we want to kind of show because it can really become a teaching tool just given all the numbers of people that would be walking around the site. There's lots of like outdoor dining, a lot of um, just pedestrian activity, which you don't see very much of in LA. So this could really be a great opportunity for that. And I'm sure I missed other stuff, so. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Thanks, Patricia. Okay, so lots of ideas there. And to conclude, we just have, I think, 10, 15 minutes left. What I'd love to do is pull you over to this last moment to actually kind of think together about how we might work further on this. Because of course, there's kind of lots of ingredients that have been identified in terms of sustainability and program and strategies and even comparisons between uh, Bout Sotaham and Hayden Tract, which I love to hear. And what could be quite a tangible way to work together on these things? So I put a few ideas on the board here. If you kind of pull over to the to the right hand side, everyone, this next steps box. Um, it could be, for example, to set up a living lab together. So that's uh, something that could be interesting for the um, downtown site that Patricia just described that could be a kind of um, uh, showcase for circularity or can we start to develop a pilot project together is there a site a, one specific site that someone has in mind that's kind of ready to go uh, or a challenge some kind of problem in the city that really needs to be looked at from a circular or sustainability perspective so maybe if you just take a couple of minutes to um, put down kind of what you personally would like to take as a next step um, and what you feel you could kind of contribute to um, a collaboration here. Mm. We'll just put a few minutes and feel free also to shout out because this is a moment to really conclude and really kind of give feedback about how we want to work together. It would also be nice to to also type your name on the post-it so we know <laughs> who's saying it. Some accountability, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right at the very end of our uh, session there, I had mentioned, so I'm um, the homeowner's president of uh, a multifamily residential uh, area, but it's uh, fairly large, about 14 acres with 404 units. And we now have a, an uh, appetite for sustainability and, and things like this. So it, um, that we're looking at community gardens, we're looking at, at doing our own uh, bicycle parking and, and potentially even, you know, shared uh, bicycling and and uh, a lot of sustainability initiatives as we have a lot of rehab that needs to happen in the 50-year-old site. Okay, that sounds like a perfect one. Can we put yeah. that already in site? Does that site have a name? Uh, it's called Heather Village. I put it under a pilot project. I'll mention okay. we have very little money. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> okay, but good to have a very tangible site. And in a in a neighborhood that historically has actually been pretty averse to uh, you know change, but we have really made a lot of stride strides in uh, in 
changing of the culture in our community as well for more openness to um, to these sorts of things, and that you know that could be part of a pilot as well. Yeah, and I was quite heartened to hear from Alex that the city actually owns a lot of the land. So this seems like quite a good sort of um, catalyst or platform to be able to take agency in, in its development. I don't know, Alex, if you want to also speak to the possibilities that you see there or the kind of way that we might go about developing a project um, on land which is owned by the city. Well, you know, we don't have a, a very many sites, um, but and traditionally, there's I think institutionally an, an, an aversion to sort of exercising that state capacity that I'm really pushing back against. Um, and I think that this is, a, as, as Thomas mentioned, uh, or at least implied, a, a watershed um, or pivotal site with that we really do want to show what's possible. And with land values, what they are here, that gives us a tremendous amount of leverage to, as long as, we, as, long as we're willing to, to be innovative, to, to fight, push back against some of the um, traditional views on what should be downtown, how tall a building should be, whether there should be parking, um, how it should be financed, that sort of stuff, how it should be owned. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there, just, just in thinking differently and being more open. So if well, land plus willingness is a pretty big opportunity in Culver City. Great to hear. Maybe Alice, if I can say one one little learning we had here in the bikes of the hum, which might be interesting. Uh, not sure how the U.S. context will deal with this, but how the how the bikes of the hum will be transformed in the coming years to a, a circular and, and very sustainable neighborhood is with a kind of uh, uh, rules of the game. So there's uh, there, there everyone now can build, for instance, one layer. And the municipality says, yeah, sure, you can build more. You can build like four to five layers. But you have to uh, work. You, you have to build this in a circular way. So you have to abide by some of our conditions. So we make uh, uh, the rules of the game. If you play along the rules, you can build more if you want. If you don't, if you don't do it, you you cannot. So that's kind of creating an incentive for for uh, developers and 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 landowners to uh, well to to build uh, in the in the in the right way. It's very encouraging to hear because that was something that came out in our breakup breakout session as well. A political strategy as well. Yeah. And based on Alex, what you mentioned about the sort of antagonism towards the state really taking that full agency role, do you see that uh, creating this kind of, um, almost, it's almost a sort of design guideline, I think that uh, Chia had mentioned and then using the state power to enforce that, is that something that could be possible in Culver City, do you think? I think so. I sure hope so. I mean, that's a, that's a something that's at least somewhat familiar. People in the United States think of it in terms of value capture, which I think is can be counterproductive. Um, I think think of it, thinking of it as incentive is much more, um, much better. Um, the other thing that I just want to add, and you all probably have more experience with this, is we lack the lived experience with these spaces. We A lot of Americans have never experienced a good urban space. Um, and so we really need a, that, like a real pilot program, like an, like an EBA. That's an okay. interesting comment. <laughs> Do you want to say more, Craig? <laughs> no, about most Americans have not experienced a, a, a vital urban space. Literally, they have not. And... Um, uh, that that's maybe an educational effort to to push out, which is one of the things that uh, the Culver Triangle there uh, perhaps could actually uh, succeed as a kind of promotion of that kind of sensibility. <laughs>